Hi guys, Every Knife Guy here, and this video is going to be my part in the 2016 Swizza Gauntlet. If you don't know what this is, uh, YouTuber Fat Adkins originally bought one of these new Swizza knives, which uh, if you don't know what they are, they're a new Swiss knife, basically a competitor to Victorinox and formerly Wenger. Uh, so they're a new knife on the market, so he bought one of these, and he has sent it to a few different people. You can see my name on there, I'm number six. So the idea is... He did a review on it, he sent it to Neil, Canadian Sheepdog, Gun Collector, Hollow Point, and now me. And each one of us does a video on it, we do some, uh, well, I'll show you the rules in a second. We basically do a review on it and uh, send it on to the next person. Once it gets number 10, it's going to go back to him and it'll be his knife, of course, but it gives lots of people a chance to try it out, and I think that's a really, really cool idea. So I have to thank Neil, the knife guy, um, who actually was the one who got in touch with me to get me into the, into the pool of people for this. So thank you, Neil, and uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get on with it. So you guys probably know that I actually had a, bought a Swizza a few months ago and did a review on this. So this is a different model that we're looking at today. Um, the rules for the gauntlet are no sharpening, factory edge only, knife must see some form of hard use, do not intentionally abuse it, don't do nasty shit with the tweezers, <laughs> I think it's quite funny, uh, show use of at least one tool other than the main blade. Now if I'd had time and the inclination I was actually going to do a spoof with the tweezers showing some pretty bad stuff and then uh, show you that it's not actually the ones from this knife, but I didn't get around to that so we're going to keep it sensible today, uh, make it fun, hopefully it will be fun. Uh, the funnest part might be you seeing me actually uh, busting my knuckles, but we'll, we'll come to that in a little bit, that's to do with the hard use test, so stick around for that. This is probably going to be a longer video because we're uh, going to look at this knife briefly first of all. I'm not going to go into too much detail because I'd like you to go and check out all these other guys who have done videos on it. I have watched quite a lot of their content. Uh, I haven't watched all of it because I didn't want to kind of um, impinge upon what I wanted to do as a hard use test. So I don't know if anyone else has done this. Uh, they may have done, in which case I apologize if you, you end up watching something twice. But I didn't want to get influenced by what they'd done. So I, I tried not to watch the hard use stuff particularly, but I did watch some of their reviews and things. So go check out any of those guys for all the basics on the knife. We're going to kind of skip over that because I think, um, again, I haven't checked, but I think I'm unique in having another Swizza to actually compare with this one. And there are different models. You'll see the one that I'm doing the gauntlet on is actually a thicker model. So the first thing I'm going to do is compare these two directly. And uh, you can find my original review on this. I'll try and remember to post a link in the description, but I did a review on this. This is a corkscrew model, just single layer. Um, so again, check that out for all my pros and cons on this one, but we'll do a, pretty much a comparison. And then we're going to do a hard use test, which is going to involve this piece of wood. And as I say, me probably bleeding from the knuckles. So something to look forward to for everyone. Um, first of all, this is the D01 that I bought. So it's a very simple knife. It has a knife blade, uh, reamer all, tweezers in the end there. Um, i trying to remember what it has. Corkscrew, of course, I'll, I'll leave that in there just now. And uh, I think that was about it, wasn't it? Yeah, I don't think there's really anything else in there. It's a pretty basic knife. I quite like it. I like the fact it's got a locking blade. Uh, the lock is the button here. Um, it's very lightweight, quite ergonomic, and uh, just a really nice little uh, slip joint feel, but without being a slip joint, it's a lock. So uh, quite useful. I do EDC that quite a bit in uh, kind of in place of something like, let me see, like this compact, uh, uh, yeah, Victorinox compact, or what else do I have in my pocket? Um, Victorinox Soldier, something like that. I will, you know, I'll I'll mix it up and EDC this sometimes. I quite like the light, like the knife, excuse me. I like the handle feel, nice sort of soft touch handle on it. So this is the D04 uh, that was sent to me part of the gauntlet. This one has a Phillips screwdriver in the back, which is a big plus, I think. Uh, it also has opening layer tools, by which I mean a can opener and flathead, and of course a cap lifter and large flathead on here. So those are pretty important additions. It has the main blade, the reamer, the tweezers, so everything else the same, apart from, uh, as I say, the screwdriver rather than the corkscrew, a bit more useful. Uh, there is a D03 model, which I believe is this, uh, but with a corkscrew. And I think the D02 is the same as D01, but it has the Phillips as opposed to the corkscrew on here. So it just basically adds or removes the opening layer tools. So corkscrew, uh, sorry, Phillips would be more useful for me on this one, I think, but it just happened to be the one that I managed to pick up uh, back at the start of the year. So uh, these only really came out last year, I think, and uh, still, um, you know, they're not too hard to find, but um, they're not as common as some things. So um, in hand, this one definitely feels a little bit heavier, as you'd expect, having an extra layer of tools. Also, this is a more solid tool on the back than the corkscrew. Um, same overall dimensions. 
this one in the red color, which is actually slightly orangey, I would say. Uh, it depends on the light. It looks very orange on the camera right now. It's not really that bad. Uh, but in comparison, here is a Celador Red Victorinox, which you can see is a much deeper red. That's definitely much more of an orange hue. Here is a Victorinox with the nylon Econoline scales. You can see even that is a much darker red. Uh, what else do I have lying around? This is the box that they come in, just a simple plastic box. Um, the red on there is a little bit deeper, more of a fire engine red on here, I would say. Definitely a little orange or almost pinky on here, I would, I would, I would go with. Um, I actually prefer the blue one that I got. There is a black and a white as well. Um, red would probably be my last choice in these, to be honest. Um, just keeping it real. But uh, I do like the blue, so. Main blade, of course, is locking blade. Uh, let's open that up. And they all have these kind of new style nail nicks with this kind of eyelet in it. I haven't cleaned this up, as you can see, since it came to it from the other people. Um, still feels fairly sharp. Definitely not quite as sharp as mine. This hasn't had a huge amount of use. Um, same blade on them, of course. Uh, shares the same opening. Uh, so let me get rid of that one for a second. Shares the same style of kind of open eye nail nick for the opening layer tools. Now, the first thing that came to mind is, oh my God, that uh, opening layer can opener. It's just, feels like there's almost no uh, lock to that at all. It's just, you know, obviously it's not locking, but it does have a slip joint uh, backspring lock, whatever you want to call it, to keep it open. Feels like it's almost non-existent. It just goes in and out there so easily. I'm used to, of course, uh, Victorinox. Uh, slight bit of play in the blade, same on mine. Uh, not a big deal. And I find that on the Victorinox uh, locking ones as well, like the um, uh, the German Army knife, one-handed trekker, stuff like that. So. Uh, very very sturdy lock for the size of the knife, I think, fair to say. Uh, the opening layer tools, let's get to those because those are major difference from this one. It's a very light uh, pivot on this uh, can opener. A little bit just stiffer and better snap. And of course a half stop on the on the cap lifter bottle opener. Okay, um, let's have a look at that in comparison to... Let's see, the, the model we're going to be using later for our hard use is going to be this small tinker the nylon scale model here. So let's have a look at the style of that in comparison to Victorinox one. Much longer, uh, much kind of deeper cutout here. You see a little wire stripper there uh, on it. So a bit of a different design. This one, a smaller one could be an 84 millimeter. 84? That sounds about right, doesn't it? 84 millimeter. Let's have a quick look compared to the Soldier. Uh, I'm conscious we're at seven and a half minutes already, guys. I'm trying not to make this too, too long. Our hard use test is going to take a little minute. So there it is on a full, compared to full size Victorinox, about the same size, a little bit thinner materials, definitely not quite as uh, chunky as the Victorinox one. But uh, let's get back to the original idea, which was more of a comparison to the one I have. So uh, for adding those extra tools, let's see just how much thicker is this knife. Let's look at them logo end to logo end. Okay, so you can see you can see the extra layer in there definitely, uh, but not a huge amount bulkier. Uh, definitely doesn't feel a lot bulkier. These are quite nice contoured kind of scales, you can see. So these really feel pretty slim in your pocket, I would say, particularly this one. But obviously, even this one uh, doesn't take up a huge amount of real estate in your pocket. It does feel slightly heavier. Let's just check weight on these. Um, for the scales to boot up. So my original one, D01, is 2.2 ounces. The D04 is 3.1. So just add an extra ounce with the the extra layer. Let's try the small tinker for comparison. Under two ounces, very lightweight, that one with the nylon scales. Uh, the Compact, which is a great EDC tool. Uh, I go on about this all the time in terms of a, a Victorinox for EDC. This has so much functionality. 2.2, uh, so similar, you know, similar weight to the D01, uh, even though this has scissors. Um, it ha What else does this have? This one has pen. Uh, corkscrew, all sorts of different stuff on it. A lot more tools basically than the D01, but about the same weight. So, But it's much and such the same. I mean, the heaviest of all of these, which is the D04 we're doing the gauntlet on, is about three ounces, so it's still by no means heavy. It does feel quite quality with that weight. It does feel fairly sturdy. And bear in mind, this has been through a few hands now. Uh, I am, what, number, number six on the list. So five other guys have beat the crap out of this. And it doesn't look very scuffed up. Uh, it's a little dirty along there, but that's what you'd expect just from pocket carry. Um, the tools are all straight by the looks of it, so the hard use has obviously not been too hard. There hasn't been any of the abuse that was warned against in the rules. Uh, the locks button still feels good. Um, tweezers are still in there. Tweezers stashed in the end, of course. Hopefully nobody has been uh, poking at any pimples or whatever with those. 
And uh, yeah, so if you're going to go with one, I still would, I would definitely say you know aim for one of the the thicker models, either with the corkscrew or the screwdriver, just for the extra functionality. They're only a few dollars more usually in most places. I just picked this one up because it was about the first one I found. They were just becoming available on this side of the Atlantic, so I went for it. And uh, yeah, not not overall a very much bigger form factor, and you do get a better kind of EDC tool set. So definitely would recommend this one over this, but maybe not so much the color. That's just personal preference though. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this swizzle. And um, we're gonna do our hard use net test now, which is gonna be uh, kind of between these two. This is again, the small tinker from Victorinox, and this was a D04. Now my idea for this was to test out one tool that these two have in common. And, uh, oh, we've got these the wrong way around, look. Very handily, the, uh, the initials of these spell V and S, so this is the Versus. And uh, so we're gonna do a hard use test on both of these and just see how they get on. So my idea was to utilize uh, one tool that these have in common which is of course their crosshead or Phillips screwdriver. And uh, yeah, so we're basically gonna take this piece of uh, unidentified construction grade wood and we're gonna drill some screws into it. Now, the first thing I found when I went to actually set this test up, I had the idea for quite a while. I went to set the test up and realized that on this side of the Atlantic, particularly in Canada, I think, I'm not sure, uh, most screws come with a square head or uh, Robertson, I believe it's called. Uh, so it was quite hard to find actual screws with the uh, with the cross head on them. But I did find some. The only ones I could find consistently enough of were these deck screws, which are pretty good at self-tapping. Uh, they really pull in pretty tight. Um, they are, what, uh, one and a half inch long. And I think they're about three sixteenths in the shaft. So not a thick screw, not beefy by any means, but, I mean, these are not exactly professional grade uh, screwdrivers. So... I think these represent a fairly good test to see if they can drive these into this wood. We are going to mix things up a bit by giving them kind of three grades. Uh, so the first grade is, I've actually drilled pilot holes in here, which you might be able to see. So we have a 5 64th hole, a 1 16th and a 0, so that is just straight wood we're going into there. Same on this side for the Swizzer. Show you the drills that were used so there's no, <laughs> there's no um, kind of ambiguity about whether those holes were actually drilled. So we have two drills here. Oops, turn around this way. Uh, so there's your 1 16th and 5 64ths. Okay, so those are the two. Just to give you an idea, if you don't really know the, know the actual numbers I'm talking about, there's an idea of how thick those are. So pilot hole of the larger one would you know, be fairly good for something, a screw like this, which bites quite hard. Um, so it's not by any means making it too easy for them, but uh, you know, it's going to give give them a little bit of an easier start and then we'll, we'll work up to the hardest one and see how they both compare. Now let's look at the screwdriver tips on each. Uh, so you can see a much more pointed tip on the Swizzer. Uh, now I'm not sure if that would be more useful around the house or not. Um, and that's kind of because they've had to go with an overall thinner tool I think. So they've had to taper that more, whereas a thicker, chunkier shaft on the one in the Victorinox for sure and you end up with that bigger cross on the top. Now, uh, I think that might pose some issues for the Swizzer with uh, slipping out or um, kind of rounding off the head of the screws. Let's just try one of these deck screws we're gonna use. And these are just, if you don't really know what deck screw is, it's more really just a general purpose construction wood screw. Uh, let's pop it onto the Victorinox. Absolutely perfect fit on there, and that's not by my intention. I'm not trying to show the Victorinox in a good light and, and shit on the Swizzer or anything like that. It's just the way it is. Uh, absolutely perfect fit. The Victorinox fills the slots there and uh, really bites in hard. Uh, the Swizzer, not so much. There's definite play there. Uh, just because it's much more pointed design, it's really only grabbing the top. There is a little bit of wear in here, obviously, from the other guys who've tested this, but not a huge amount. Uh, fairly comparable on the Victorinox. So they're both used models but there's no real damage. There's no damage being done to these in the past. I do have, uh, I only found one other screw actually with a cross head here. This one, a bit of a different profile on top, more just a kind of a general purpose screw again. Um, that one definitely locks in a little bit better on there. And of course the wider flanges on this might actually be a disadvantage depending on the type of screw you're using. Uh, but again, that locks in pretty well in the Victorinox. Um, but something with a narrower head wouldn't, you know, go all the way onto the head of this. So you wouldn't really get a firm grip, whereas the more pointed design might be better for multifunction and for more kind of different types of screw heads, I'm not sure. Uh, I know, I'm no expert on that, but we're going to give them a go and see how they get on with these uh, wood screws anyway. So let's put the Swizzer on that side, Victorinox on that side. And uh, of course that's the V for Victorinox, S for Swizzer, and we're going to go ahead and do the easiest one first. Um, now, 
uh, there's, there's no rehearsal in this, we're doing this whole video in one take, so please do bear with me guys, I have no idea how this is going to go. I'm just going to set the screw and just give it a quarter turn just to fix it. And then we're going to take the Victorinox first and see if we can't drive this in here. Now this might take a little while. That's it, we're getting going now. Right, see so if we can hold that on there, just turn this. Yeah, since we got in fairly well. Now for time constraints, we might not be putting these all the way in, I'm not sure. Okay, so I think we'll go with something like that far in, otherwise we're going to be here all day and you guys are going to get bored. And to be honest, I'm lazy and I can't really be bothered editing the video and uh, speeding it up. So let's take a look at that in comparison to the regular screw. That is how far in we are. So we've gone in probably an inch. So we'll go with driving them all in an inch. As long as we keep the test uh, comparable between the both between both models, I don't think that's unfair. Um, let's go ahead and do all the Victorinox ones first. How about that? So this one, of course, really quite a small pilot hole. This really shouldn't be of very much benefit to the screw. So I'm going to try and do this one side view so you can get an idea of what we're doing here. So we can get this started. Now I did drill these pilot holes with a drill press, so they should be fairly straight. You can definitely hear a bit more creaking as this goes into the wood. I think the screw is actually slightly deformed in, uh, in the way it's been made. Now that was the first time I've actually slipped. I apologize for the uh, quite intense squeaking noise being made. And this is the sort of situation where if you haven't drilled enough of a hole, and uh, your screw isn't a very good quality, you might actually snap it. So there's potential for injury here. So we've gone in slightly more on that one. Uh, went in really pretty easily again. No complaints. Let's try the zero pilot hole. So I'll just try and get this as straight as I can. I'm just going to give it a little push on my fingers just to start it. And I'll set this one down the bench just to get it going. Yeah, if I slip off the head of this and put it through my thumb, um, please do bear with me, the video will go black for a little bit and I'll have to edit out all the swearing and the blood and stuff and then we'll come back. Okay, so you can see there I've got this started, let's just check. Yeah, so we're in a couple of turns, which should be enough to, to hold up to the camera like this and let you see. See how much complaints there are. Shouldn't actually be as much squeaking from this one, because of course it's not going into a hole that's, you know, technically too small for it. Maybe a little bit. Oh, no, there's going to be some squeaking. Yeah, it's getting really quite stiff now. And the head of the screwdriver, I'm really having to pinch with my forefinger and thumb there to keep the to keep the head of the screwdriver on the screw. It's actually starting to it's actually starting to grind out the head of the screw a little bit. And that's pretty much. I don't feel confident that I'd be able to drive the rest of that, you can see my fingers there, to drive the rest of that in very easily. So let's put the Victorinox down for a minute and have a little look at that if we can. You can see there there's definitely some damage on the cross of the screwdriver, uh, very little on that at all and absolutely no slippage on that one. So that's our three Victorinox ones in pretty comparable distance. Uh, let's go ahead and try the Swizzer and see how it gets on. We'll go with the easiest one first as before. So we'll just get that started a little bit. <coughs> And uh, yeah, I'm not, not feeling too confident with this at the moment because, as I say, already I'm feeling like the hold this takes on the head of the screw isn't really that, isn't really that good. Um, I'm really having to pinch the head of the screw already just to keep the, keep the screwdriver seated in it. I'm getting going now a little bit. Nope. Yeah, what I'm finding is unless you have absolutely perfect uh, perpendicular angle with the shaft of the Swizzard to the screw, it really wants to slip out. And I know this is an innuendo filled video, guys. I'm I'm well aware of that. I've just, I, I've made a conscious mental effort not to draw attention to it. And one other thing I'm noticing as I'm doing this, the shaft on the Swizzard's screwdriver is a little longer there, but it actually feels a lot longer. Or perhaps it just, you know, that's pretty stiff. Yeah, that's not doesn't feel too bad either. But for some reason, this one just feels like it wants to fold up on me the whole time. Whereas I never actually felt that with the Victorinox. It could be to do with the angle. 
if you're holding like that, the you know, that's kind of how I'm holding it in my hand. The angle of the Victorinox is obviously 90 degrees perpendicular. Depending how you had the Swizza, it's kind of leaning back on itself, which is encouraging it to close up. Um, I'm definitely feeling that. I feel like this is going to scissor on my finger at any second. And to be honest, guys, I'm, I'm really struggling here to get this in any further. It isn't really slipping, but it's not... Well, it is, but it's not grabbing the screw even enough to to grind it out and take any of the metal out. It just wants to fold up. Look, it just... You can see it there. It's just... it's try <laughs> Yeah, there was a nip in my finger. It's trying to fold up on me the whole time. And um, you can probably see there, we haven't even managed to get that one in as far as the you know, the hardest one on this side. So we'll leave that one at that and we'll go ahead and give it the benefit of the doubt with a different screw and a different hole. And uh, yeah, I, mean, I apologize about all the innuendo, but you guys will just have to pick up on it in the comments and you can talk amongst yourselves and say what the best joke was, whatever. So let's go ahead and get started. This is the 1 16th pilot hole. So this one is a pilot hole, I would say a little bit small for this screw, let's put it that way. So we've got in a couple of turns and we're starting to feel a bit of slippage. It just de like it really wants to fold up on my finger. You know how you're holding a tool like this and you're pressing down hard and suddenly it, you know, crunches your finger like that? Never a nice experience. And this one just feels like it wants to do it the whole damn time. Um, I'm really having to put a lot of pressure down through the tool to try and keep the screw moving. And it's just not. This, I wasn't really sure when I was using the Victorinox because I haven't really driven the screws like this with a tool like this before. You know, normally you just use it for around about the house tasks and, you know, this is maybe a bit of an unfair test, but it, you know, it is a hard use test. This is about the hardest thing, you know, you'd ever really be looking to do with one of these. Um, so I wasn't really sure when I was using the Victorinox if that was good or not, but in comparison to this, it actually felt really easy to put those screws in, even the one that wasn't into a pilot hole. Um, I honestly feel that's, I'm not rigging this guys, I honestly feel that's about as far as this thing wants to put this in. It really isn't. You know, with the Victorinox we heard that all that squeaking, which was it torquing the screw into the wood. And it's just quite difficult. Let's give it, give it a fair shot. We'll put it on the bench, which obviously will allow me to put more pressure on. But I just feel like the more pressure, the more pressure I put on, the more it wants to just completely crumple onto my finger and I don't really want to do that. So we've got that one in a little less. Um, we're going to go ahead and for the sake of the video, I mean we've come 22 minutes, we might as well go half an hour. Let's uh, try and get the third one started. And give it a go. And I'm actually getting a bit out of breath. I don't know if that's because I'm massively unfit, but uh, or if it's the Swizzers just taking it out of me. I do do a reasonably physical job, so I don't think I'm that unfit, but um, Let's hold this screw just to get it started. Um, when it's easy turning the screw at the start, uh, I don't feel like the pointed screwdriver tip on the Swizzer is that much of a disadvantage. The main issue I'm feeling is that just it just wants to fold up me all the time. Um, I'm going to go back and try the Victorinox after this just to give you my thoughts on that. But There's just something, I think it's to do with the curve of this means that you're not holding it perfectly at the right angle all the time. Whereas this, you know, it just feels most natural to hold it perpendicular because it's a totally kind of flat side on the on the body of the Victorinox. And I think the thing to take away from this is I felt completely safe driving all those screws that far and would have, you know, would have felt safe going further all the way into the wood, but I didn't want to take too much time doing it. This that's as far in as I am. I'm not straight. And I don't even feel safe going any further because this just wants to fold up on me the whole time. And I really don't want to do any more of that and crush my finger. So I'm going to be a pussy and put that one down. And we'll go back to Victorinox just to go with a little bit more. This is the this is a screw without a pilot hole. And I do realize that this kind of looks rigged. And I kind of have just, you know, shit on the Swizza for not being able to do this. Right now, I do feel there's more chance of this screw snapping than, well, it's folded up a little bit on me there, but this is under extreme stress now. I mean, we're, we're almost an inch and a half into this wood and it's still turning it. So this is the hardest screw. 
this small tinker has just driven it basically an inch and a half straight into the wood. So that, that's, that test actually, well it didn't go very well for the Swizza, but it actually worked a lot better than I was expecting because there was a much bigger difference than I was expecting. Um, I wasn't really expecting it to be that hard and I just feel, I don't know if it's the, the lock isn't strong enough or what, but um, I do feel like the Swizza kind of failed a bit there. Uh, which is a shame because I mean I really like the knives, um, but that wouldn't encourage me to go and buy this D01 with the with the screwdriver, which I was kind of thinking of doing at some point, uh, but I might I might have to rethink that because um, you know you want it to be a really useful tool. And I, as I say, maybe I'm being a little harsh on it because you're not going to be driving many screws into into blocks of wood with your your EDC pocket knife. But you know, as a hard use test, I think it serves a purpose and. Hopefully that gives you guys a good comparison. I'm going to go and catch my breath and uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. I'm not sure who this is going to next. Uh, these are the people again who it's been to so do check out their channels please and watch their videos and see if anybody already did this test. I'm going to check that out now as well. Uh, but um, yeah hopefully you'll see this knife go to four other people and uh, yeah hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and if you're still here thank you for sticking around for 26 minutes. Have a great day. Cheers.